Hello, I'm Katelise Forrest from Doctor Who Dark Journey, and you're listening to the Droids Canada podcast. After three weeks of waiting, wondering if it will happen, the moment has come, and the announcement of announcements is about to be presented. Ooh, Toronto Comic Con! Mr. J, Arachnash, the Mountain Man, and Raider are invading March the 20th to 22nd, Toronto Comic Con in Toronto, which is a given. We'll be inventing and out with such celebrities as Chad Coleman, Karen Jimmy, Shannon Dowry, J.O.S. Richards, and Terry Thurl and more. Make sure you get your tickets at ComicConToronto.com. Make sure you get to see everyone, including AmAudioMedia.com, Doctor Who, Dark Journey, That Joker Guy, and more. If you see us, say hi to the droids and bring us some chimichangas. I'm currently uh, not wearing clothes. Is okay. I yeah, guess. that's fine. Yeah, absolutely. We are. You know, no I couldn't do this video after all. Uh, you know, we survived a call with Chalmers, and uh, <laughs> <laughs> he, he's pretty free spirited too. So I mean, he's very free spirited. Yeah, that's a good way to put it. <laughs> yeah, um, so, he's not with us tonight. Actually, I have a restraining order on him. So what? Um, yeah, why would you do yeah. that? Yeah, it's the naked thing. I can't. You know. <laughs> so, yeah. You know, that's People shouldn't see that later on a Sunday night. You know, that's funny because it doesn't surprise me either at the same time. So, um, all right. So, this is our episode 187. Uh, we hope to meet you guys all soon. I know that um, this has kind of been a work of progress with uh, Mike and Andrew, and I hope to meet the other two gentlemen as well. Uh, we hope to have you on our 200th show. That's actually our goal is to have you guys on our 200th show because... Uh, we we found that due to your popularity, and I hope likewise as well, uh, we actually our audience grew a little bit. So it's kind of a thank you to wow. you guys. Um, I think we went from only having an audience of I want to say three four thousand people a month. We expanded out to ten thousand since the nice. first episode. So oh, wow. I mean, and uh, we have been promoting, and I'm sure you guys have noticed that uh, we've been promoting your page a lot uh we have it actually mm-hmm. listed on our page as a as a jump link to get people yes. over to you guys um because yeah well we've, we've, you're welcome thank you uh sorry go ahead mike i was i was just gonna say yeah like uh yeah we love what you guys are doing too so i mean uh it's great uh the podcast that you guys do and we're happy to spread that uh spread that around well, we do so, understand yeah. that sometimes our stuff is a little bit uh uh, what's the word? Uh, offensive. Offensive sometimes because we like to have fun. We, you know, right. we, we we try to live outside the PC bubble of life. I guess I would say, and really try to. Um, we have like multiple shows constantly running every week, so it, it's really great to have you guys on the show because um, I, I won't lie to you, I was not a Doctor Who fan at the beginning, and now since talking to you guys, I've gotten into the realm of Doctor Who. So. When Chalmers throws comments at me, I'll be able to defend myself this time. I don't know what to say now to get him back. Because I think he was calling me a Cyberman the last time. He was. He was. Yeah. <laughs> now you actually understand what now, it means. Now I understand what's going on. That's a, now it's a lot easier. Yeah. So I can say no, no, no. Well, we've well, got Ricky here just, who's... Sorry, go ahead. Sorry, Ricky, go ahead. I was just going to say, you know, having context for your uh, for being insulted, that's uh, it's always good. <laughs> he can be our stand-in for insulting, yeah. And Ricky's Ricky's a bit of a Doctor Who buff as well, so. Oh, good. Oh, yeah. Uh, He's English, so he has to be, right, Ricky? Yeah, it's the law. Oh, jeez, yeah. is that real? <laughs> That's a prerequisite Do- now. Doctor Who and one beer. Oh, jeez. Uh, if not, you get flogged. Oh, really? Yeah. I-, I heard there's a rule though back in England is that you're not allowed to wear soccer jerseys. Is that true? Well, I, don't, I wouldn't even know what a soccer jersey was. Oh, I mean. a football jersey, but... Oh, right. <laughs> I, I called for that one. I know it was my own fault. I think we're talking a completely different language. Um, <laughs> I think it's I think it's in certain certain bars, it's uh, illegal not to wear them. So. Well, it mm. was just funny because I was talking to... I have a relative that lives out in uh, uh, Derry, Ireland, and sometimes he comes into England and he says that uh, you, you shouldn't really wear a football jersey. It depends where you are. 
Oh, yeah, okay, absolutely. Because you might be walking to the wrong bar, um, and they might be supporting. Like, I'm a Man U fan, so I'm fine. But I don't know. Well, of course you are. You don't live in Manchester. Everybody <laughs> outside Manchester is a Man U fan. <laughs> um, so that's why I was like, all right, well. Because I'm thinking about going out to England next year and visiting Ireland as well. And I'm like, oh, should I bring the jersey or not? Be know. safe. Leave it at home. This Maybe way you leave don't it at home there. there. <laughs> okay, so let's talk about season two. Uh, our, we heard a clip, and I won't mm-hmm. lie to you, I want more. Uh, <laughs> because I can tell you, when I listened to it, I was like, oh, this is going to be dark. Thank you, thank you, yeah. Yeah, it is. I mean, the the second series, it is dark. Um, we uh, we find a resolution to what's happened to the Doctor at the end of series one, where he's uh, lying in a uh, possibly dead-like state. Will he regenerate? Will he not? Of course he will. He's Doctor Who. But um, we're going to find out exactly how that happens and um, how the uh, how um, what happens with Anthony, who's been kidnapped by the Illuminati, and um, and uh, just find out what happens to uh, the Doctor and Sherlock Holmes. Yeah, yeah. Like I mean, especially after how season one ended, and I think my favorite. I think I mentioned this the last time we talked. Is like my favorite moment was the dialogue between the Doctor and between Holmes. Uh, mm-hmm. That happened near the end, and I I really wanted more. So Thank then, you. Yeah, yeah. So then, when we when you send us those lines, um, what you want to record it? I'm like, ooh, if this is really getting mm-hmm. dark now. Now, for the listeners here at home, what we've done is actually because we love the droids so much, we invited the droids to be part of series two. So you will hear a special um, a special cameo appearance by uh, both AJ and Todd. And Rainer. and and Rainer as and well. Rainer. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, we had like six, we have six people that in total on the on the site right now mm-hmm. and uh there was a couple people that couldn't make it um which just, is upsetting which yeah. just from distance purposes yeah we're, we're kind yeah. of it's spread hard out to get a hold of yeah. yeah well shout outs shout outs to uh to gabrielle because she's actually doing some art for us yeah. which is fantastic she's a member of uh of the droid site as well i think she goes by uh arcanash arcanash is that yeah, right she goes yeah by, arcanash yeah yeah yeah, yeah. She's yeah been so we're delighted pretty... to have some artwork from her so yeah her artwork looks i i've seen it's some beautiful glimpses. it's just gorgeous she won't show me the whole thing, though. It's like she's oh. kind of hiding it, and she's like, uh-huh. no, 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 only when it's done. <laughs> but uh, Well, this is, this is really exciting because um, along with, along with Gab- uh, Gabrielle, we've got uh, some other artists on, involved to do, um, to do custom covers for every episode. So we're going to have seven episodes, so we're going to have seven art covers, which is really exciting. So um, we're working with all these different artists from around the globe, uh, from uh, Australia, uh, England, um, got a guy in Calgary is helping us as well and all really just totally different styles uh different takes on the doctor and stuff um i mean if people are on your site they'll probably see little tastes of it pop up now and again and on our site as well so yeah. really excited about that now just when it comes down to the audio play because i know you guys recently took home a couple of awards if I'm correct. we did mm-hmm. and that's pretty fantastic because as soon as i saw that come up i was like i'm not surprised i was oh, not shocked no, whatsoever not uh, because I, I never knew about audio play that well, and then once I started listening to your show, I listened to a couple other shows, and yours is far, and this is not just a pop, but far superior compared to what I've listened to other ones, and it kind of made me want to start my own little project on the side, which is still kind of kicking around, but mm, I mean, mm. there's a lot, of, I can see a lot of time you guys put into this work, and definitely getting the award definitely was well-deserved for all of you. Um now, is that a yearly thing for the Audioverse Awards? Like, that... Yeah, the uh, the Audioverse Awards are celebrated every year. And actually, uh, we've entered a few other contests as well that Ricky actually turned us on to. So um, hopefully we can uh, we can do well in those and spread the word uh, about the audio play. But I think the whole thing is really, it, it just boils down to, uh, to teamwork. Like, we had a really great team for Series 1. Uh, we had Clayton Turner doing all the sound design, which is just fantastic. The sound yep. just pops, as you said. And, um, you know, and the actors that are involved as well. And it all comes together with the script. And, um, you know, when you put it all together, it all, it really all works. But it can't be done without, you know, everyone, uh, everyone that's involved. It's a really, it's a massive undertaking, which I think a lot of audio plays don't really, um, I guess, make plans for that. They, a lot of them are just like one or two guys and they do all the parts and they do narration and they do the writing and they do the production and they do the art. And it's 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 just too much you need a big team of people and supporters you know you know like the droids and you know other websites that have boosted us along the way to uh to make it all come together and i agree with that because i can tell you that 
with my experience with droids, it's become a many-headed beast, is mm-hmm. what I would say. Mm-hmm. And, I, and I do bug and the, the guys all the time about it, is that sometimes, you know, I end up doing quite a lot of the work for the site. But at the same time, I had AJ come on. Uh, when did, it, did you come on? In the summer last year? Summertime, yeah. And since then, he's taken some of the workload off of my back. And now we, not only do we have our own website, which was the goal, the huge goal is to get our own website away from social media. But mm-hmm. now we can be found on so many different platforms. And now we have our own website. Now we write for uh, moviepilot.com. We also write for bigbeatcomics.com. Mm-hmm. So we're trying to constantly push ourselves out there. Um, and along the way, help out our friends. Because, I mean, at the same time, though, we wouldn't got anywhere without friends like you guys and other sites along the way um, if you didn't promote us and likewise. So that's why we always try to make sure you guys get pops as much as humanly possible. Um, but let's just kind of go back to season two. And just going back to that whole line thing, it sounds like you guys are really going to be pushing the envelope of how dark you're going to make this. Just from what I'm reading. Yeah, it, do, it, does get, it does get pretty dark. But I have to say, though, that um, Andrew, who, I mean, who couldn't join us tonight, unfortunately, but, I mean, he's really, uh, like, the second, the second batch of scripts that we did, I think, are, uh, are even better or even more awesome than the first set. Um, there's some really snappy dialogue in there between him and Holmes. Um, and I think that um, Andrew really, actually, really, really nailed the Andrew Chalmers doctor on this last uh, this last time out. Um, so I'm really, really pleased. We've been listening back to all the audio and working through it and editing it down and stuff. And just wow, what he brings to the takes is just is just. And I can say all this because he's not here, so I won't inflate his ego. But um, <laughs> he's uh, probably lying he, around he, naked somewhere. He's, so he's, he's yeah, with his, he's with his pants off. Oh, you know? there you it's, go. It's Sunday night. <laughs> oh, you know? it, it, did that did, did that cream finally come through? <laughs> Paul, do you have your pants on? Uh, no, I'm actually in the shower right now. <laughs> <laughs> no, he has that pants That's on. Good. That's, and the internet has been won. <laughs> That's why I haven't been chiming in because I'm uh, scrubbing so, hard. That's yeah. fine. This is a non judgment zone. Good, good. <laughs> <laughs> Glad to hear that. Now I'm trying to think of how I'm going to one up him. Uh, I don't know. I'm going to one up him right now. I can't. I kind of one. No. Like just... uh, hang on. He, he's in the shower, and you want to one up him? Sorry. Oh. <laughs> what kind of a podcast is this? <laughs> it's an adult-oriented podcast. It certainly sounds it. Like... Yeah. That's okay. Uh, so, what what is like you were saying that this is um, a bigger deal. Powerful delivery this time yeah. around season two. So, if you're set, it seems like you're setting the bar really high for season two right now. So, I have to make sure, and I'm curious: is there mm-hmm. going to be a season three after all of this, or is this going to be like a huge mm-hmm. grand finale kind of season? We don't. Oh, how can I? Ooh, we don't know. We don't <laughs> know. We don't know if uh, it. It sort of depends on on uh, on how people take things and and um, if people want a series. I mean, they, we weren't sure about doing a series two because it is a massive undertaking yeah. uh, in between the writing and the acting and, you know, all the actors, you know, putting in their time and stuff. You know, right. you don't want to be um, taking up too much of people's time and stuff. But um, we'll have to see how series two goes. But I think if it goes as, seri- as well as series one, we'll definitely do something. Uh, actually, Ricky and I were talking about a secret project that may Uh-oh. Uh-oh. happen after series two so i mean the droids will be the first to know about it but uh no hint no hint at all ricky can you give any hints does what what it, the secret project involves without revealing too much ricky Ooh, oh i don't know let me tap into something mm. contact. No, I, contact. what's that that's a doctor who thing yeah 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 yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it, it could get quite interesting it could get quite interesting there could be something. We've got a few things uh, sort of on the back burner in development, but we definitely want to do something that um, involves fans and involves fandom. And um, we think that whatever we do after after Series 2 will definitely... It'll be Doctor Who oriented. There'll be something in there about Doctor Who. So, yeah, we definitely got some other projects on the go. Right. And, you know, we're, we're also looking now at doing expanding AM Audio Media's... Uh, uh, reach? Outreach? Reach? Right. Outreach? Yeah. Paul, are you still in the shower? Can I say that? Yeah, that's that's okay. That's okay. <laughs> yeah. um, beyond the uh, the Doctor Who and the sci-fi um, sort of thing, and uh, we're looking at doing maybe comedies and dramas and stuff like that. So we're exploring those options now. 
because there's a massive audience out there for audio plays, which we found through doing, doing Dark Journey. And like you were saying yourself, Todd, you're thinking of doing something as well. So there's, there's definitely an appetite for it out there. I, I won't lie to you. Um, I was kind of ignorant to the whole audio play. And then I started really diving into it. I didn't realize mm-hmm. how much of a thing this is. Mm-hmm, um, mm-hmm, and that's kind mm-hmm. of like with podcasting as well, because I, the podcasting for our site was kind of an evolutionary step of, okay, we have a huge audience. What do we do with it? And yeah. then we moved to podcasting. And I was like, I don't think I'm any good. And then we started pulling numbers like, oh, <laughs> shit, we're actually good because so, we're getting someone, people. Someone's paying yeah. attention. Someone's paying attention. We're growing an audience. Um, and now we're getting media passes from Comic Cons, and I'm like, oh well, I guess we're doing okay. I, I guess uh, we got to keep doing it. And now looking at it, I'm like, we're 187 episodes in. Like, yeah, which is a feat. I mean, a lot of podcasts they don't go that long. They do maybe 10, and then they're like, eh, that's it, because it's like a lot it. of work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we got to meet some people along the way. Uh, we got to meet. Uh, a Kevin Bartini, who is a stand-up comedian, who was the warm-up comic for uh, the Colbert. Daily Show, mm. John Stewart and John Colbert. Stewart, yeah. yeah, I heard that episode. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's for us for a loop. That he reached out to us and said, "I heard about your podcast. I want in." I was mm. like, "Whoa, cool!" So we were, when we were kind of talking back and forth, and he's like, "So what got you into the show?" And I'm like, "Oh, these guys I know with AM Audio Media. They do Doctor Who media plays." Like, I don't know much about that stuff. They're good. <laughs> <laughs> At least you know what had started this. But he's into podcasting too. So that's kind of a huge he got it he's uh, into podcasting as well. So he was just kinda of looking for a bump himself to help with his podcasting. So mm-hmm. um and you were, I remember you saying to me and I'm not, if I'm correct me if I'm wrong, uh, is that uh we may get our own little episode as well that will air as well. Um is that we're true? Working, or? We're working on things. There are things. Got ideas. There are things. We got some ideas that we'll talk about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We gotta, we gotta ease the audience into the smooth, super cool acting that is the Droids Canada. So <laughs> we'll start out with a cameo. So there's, there's a little cameo coming up, and then we'll see what we can cook up later on down the good, line. I swear. It was the audio. The audio. The, the the acting was great. Some of the. Uh, there was uh, just a bit of some technical stuff with, uh, with just a few of the bits there, but I think that you were working on that. So, yeah, yeah. thank you for that. Thank you. That's brilliant. I was talking, I talked to AJ that we're definitely going to need to just give it a little bit more of a kick. Yeah. And we'll get that sent back off to you. We'll probably get that sent back off to you tonight. Great. Because obviously you want to get your editing done and everything to that effect. Yeah. Yeah. Um, oh, well, you were asking, actually, this is a good segue. You were asking about the darkness. But, I mean, a big, big bringer of the darkness uh, was Ricky. Ricky played uh, both the Daleks and Davros, and uh, as well as many sp- scary, spirited voices on uh, Series 2. So, I don't know if, Ricky, if you want to talk a bit about that. Uh, yeah, it was. Uh, <laughs> I guess Andrew and I had. Uh, I guess he traded some uh, jokes back and forth, or rather point, poked fun at me, and uh, I, I guess I responded uh, in an audio manner. I sent him a, a little audio clip back, mm-hmm. and uh, it was it was a Dalek voice, and he's like, he wrote, he wrote back immediately, he's like, oh, you got to do the Daleks. So, <laughs> so I, I don't know, I don't know what stage in the writing process that that uh, trade. We had. Into. We had the Daleks in there, but um, I don't think that we had Davros in until until near the end, where we'd hear we'd, we'd heard uh, your kind of take on it, which was quite good. And yeah. once you put in like a ring modulator effect, these yeah. Daleks they sound they sound great, Ricky. Wait till you hear them; you won't even recognize you. But um, I, um, yeah, yeah, and it, it it really sounds spot on. So, so I was like, gonna ask you, what's it like being a Dalek? Uh, well, exterminating was it fun? Yeah, well, yeah, it's. Uh, <laughs> It required drinking a lot of water to keep the uh, keep the uh, I guess the the goiters going. But, uh, <laughs> it's uh, it was a, it's certainly a fun experience. It's, it's not a, the sort of uh, voice you you put on too often. No, no, definitely not. Well, uh, here's a good question for you. Since since the last time we've talked, uh, I think we asked. I think. Uh, what did you think of Capaldi? And now that we've gotten a season out of the way, and in, in a Christmas episode out of the way, so what's your opinion of Capaldi now? Ricky, what do you think? What Have you seen much of it? Yeah, yeah. I, I, I don't know. I, I just, I mean, he plays it very much like you would expect him to play it. it is, you, you don't warm to him too much. Yeah, just when you warm into him, he, he kind of he throws you in 
in the deep end again, and you go. Uh, so I, I don't, I don't particularly, you know, uh, find him that appealing. But mm-hmm. you know, some of some of the storylines have been good. Yeah. Um, but yeah, as as a doctor, I just find him a little bit too cold. I noticed that, and I think the one episode that really stood out to me was the episode. Um, what was it? They were in a. Uh, was it an orphanage? When they uh, could have been, yeah. It was with mm-hmm. the sheets, but you don't actually see yeah. the monsters. Oh, right. And then yeah. it's like this very powerful moment, and you're like, "My God!" Like the, the production value on this episode is so low, but yet it feels like this is a top caliber episode just because of how well it was portrayed. Um, yeah. I'm still on the fence about Capaldi. Like he has some really good episodes, but then some of them you're, you're not 100 percent sure. But mind you, I, I haven't really watched any of the older episodes of Doctor Who. I'm more from Eccleston forward still. Yeah. Mm-hmm, so mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I catch some ones with Tennant, some with Smith, which isn't too bad at all. Yeah, and my my Doctor Who's, you know, going back to Tom Baker days and Peter Davison and, and then I stop with all most of the modern Doctor Who and then jump back in with Capaldi. So right. I've got a gap kind of in the middle. Yeah, I was actually Paul and I were just talking about the same thing the other day, eh, Paul. Yeah, um, about the classic, you know, funny, the classic doctors. Yeah, I mean, my my doctor was probably Tom Baker as well, but I have to say, an underused doctor for me was the uh, the briefly, um, you know, the the doctor portrayed by Paul McGann. You remember that for the American uh, mm-hmm. Doctor? Yeah, who? yeah, mm-hmm. oh yeah, um, who was great on audio, just fantastic. Yeah, I would have liked to have seen more of him, um, but that was very short-lived. Yeah, and uh, I think that Big Finish has done a lot of interesting things with him. They've um, He has his own series called Dark Eyes now, uh, which is, I think, in its uh, fourth or maybe fifth series now. And um, he's been doing the audio plays pretty consistently since, um, I think, 2000. And um, if you listen through it, there's a great like um, evolution of the character from the movie version, which is, is great. But um, he gets even darker and funnier and romanticer. Is that a word? Uh, <laughs> and romanticer uh, as, uh, as he gets along in the, uh, in the audio series. He's, he's fantastic. And actually, I would have to say, aside from Andrew Chalmers, who's my doctor, um, I always have to say Paul McGann is is one of my favorites, definitely. Yeah. And for anyone who hasn't seen it, this is a plug for an old movie of Paul McGann it's called With Nail and I. I don't know if any of you've seen it. Before. Oh yeah, yeah. That's a, that's, a, that's a movie. Yeah, great movie. Yeah, Paul, do you get residuals on that? <laughs> I <wish. laughs> No. Okay. <laughs> no, I, I think in, in terms of my doctor, I, I, I mean, I, I kind of grew up in the Tom Baker era, but then. Moved into Peter Davidson, who was a bit wet behind the ears. Yeah. Um, but you know, watching some of the old, like John Pertwee, um, mm-hmm. he was. I, I guess I grew up with uh, another character called Wurzel Gummidge, and uh, that that would be probably um, John Pertwee's, um, I guess, claim to fame role. And uh, so, so growing up, growing up with Wurzel Gummidge, and then you know, then going back and seeing some of the Doctor Who episodes where. Yeah, he was the doctor. Uh, yeah, I, I had a soft spot for him, which is which is weird because I, I find him and Capaldi quite similar in that kind of demeanor, the the kind of snotty, um, bit stuck up kind of demeanor, a bit mm-hmm. better than everybody else kind of demeanor. Yeah. Uh, here's a question for you guys: Are you guys attending Toronto Comic Con this year in two weeks? Yeah, that's we are definitely going to be there. So, um, well, some of the members of the cast are certainly uh, myself and Andrew will be there, and some of the other members of the cast. And uh, we're actually going to have a uh, a booth at this year's uh, Comic Con. Excellent. Yeah. Now we'll be able to find them this time. Yeah, we and for all your listeners, we are going to be in Artist Alley in A one eight two. Remember those numbers: A one eight two in Artist Alley. It feels like I just wanted bingo. Yeah, yeah. That just I feels like, like a little bingo. bit. Doctor Who bingo. <laughs> well, it's funny you're not. Uh... Yeah, he's going to be down the way from my friend. Uh, I don't know if you met him. He's oh. in Artist Alley. He's that Joker guy. He's the guy that dresses up as the Joker and does all the art. I don't know if you've seen him. I've seen him. Yeah, I've seen him on your website. Yeah, yeah, he's a really great guy. Mm-hmm. He does a lot of great art and stuff like that. So yeah. you're actually not that far down from him. Oh, so. we will go and introduce ourselves. That's excellent. Uh, um, but uh, Roy Miranda, Sherlock Holmes, is going to be there. Um, our sound designer, Kevin Gray, who's hard at work on Series 2 right now, as we speak, I think, I hope. I'm sure he is. Yeah. <laughs> well, maybe. Um, 
Um, it, he's it probably got no pants on right now. I was just going to say, or if he's got no should... pants, he's doing work. If he's got pants on, no work. No, no work. Yeah. And uh, so they're going to be there and some of the other cast, and uh, we're looking forward to it. You guys going to meet Amy Pond? Um, I th- we might. Um, yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I'm not a big I'm not a big Amy Pond fan, actually, really? to be honest. Yeah. I, I don't know yeah. too much. I liked about her Amy. I liked her at the beginning and I liked the story arc that they had going with her and the um, you know, the little girl thing and then she was older and all the time travel ele- time travel elements to her character. But I thought that they kinda of stretched out near the end with uh with her and Rory, uh, Rory, Rory, I think. Yeah, Rory. Mm-hmm. Um who's a great character too, but I think that they just went a little bit too long with those characters. So because I, I was just looking at. So the, no, she can't have my fifty-five dollars. Oh, <laughs> yeah, sorry. Well, we were on the fence because we're sitting there. And we're like, oh, I'm, I, you know, I don't really know much about Amy Pond. Like, I see a couple episodes here and there. I'm like, ah. but I know her more because of the role she played in Guardians of the Galaxy, which she did very well in that role as well. Mm-hmm. Um, but there was really nothing beyond that for Doctor Who this year. Normally, they have somebody. But uh, I understand. I understand a doctor will be there actually. A doctor? I must have missed yeah. it then because uh... see it, Andrew Chalmers, the Dark Journey Doctor. Oh, will be... oh I see that? I see what yeah. he did there. Yeah, wow. look at that guy. And he will have no pants on. Oh wait. Yeah. Um, he might yeah. get arrested for that. Yeah. Yeah. I don't okay. know. Okay. All right, he'll around. have pants. On. Invisible yeah. pants. And then you got the Niagara Falls Comic Con coming up, and that one's got Colin Baker going to be there. And they also have yeah. another Doctor, but he canceled. Initially, so. yeah. Initially, they were going to have Peter Davison show up, and apparently, he got double booked. So. Oh, he had to bail and he got uh, Colin Baker in instead. Hmm. That's not necessarily a bad thing. That's not a bad thing. I would prefer yeah. to see Colin than, than Peter. Yeah. But now we're going to have to go see the Doctor at Toronto Comic Con. Yeah. Because he's the only one. So technically, he's the, only he's guy the headliner said. now. You're, you're right. He is. Yeah. Does yeah. he know and this? Did, no. No, he, I don't think we've discussed this. But, you know, did you know that Andrew Chalmers is now actually canon? He's actually a canon Doctor. He has been on television, and that makes him official in my books. There you go. Well, it's like, it's like he was on. Uh, did you guys hear about this? He was on um, uh, Maddie and uh, Kiki, and it's yes. a uh, it's a cooking show. Maddie and Kiki. They are oh, the no. foraging sisters. It's a bit oh, of a oh. dare. No, it's a bit of a dare reality show. So you go on there, and there's like, ooh, will they eat this? Will they not eat that? This kind of thing. So he was on there, and he was he was. So now he's canon. So <laughs> take that, internet. Oh no. Yeah. I'm gonna have to try and uh, watch take that this episode. Pant sellers. Is, is he gonna be able to like get through the doors of the Comic Con to get <laughs> I in? I don't know. <laughs> he might not be able to though. But yeah, yeah, he's put on a lot of weight since the last series actually, which is good because it's audio. So he might not be able to get through the door. He's been eating a lot of steak and caviar and uh, just gorging himself. Well, no, I was thinking the ego, you know, oh, being oh, that. Out. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, I don't know. I think about that. Uh, you know, that's gonna be funny. I'm not even. Yeah. I'm just gonna we'll just regenerate him. him into Ricky. It's okay. There you <laughs> go. There you go. Doctor Ricky. Doctor Ricky. Oh. I don't know. Doctor Chalmers versus Doctor Ricky. Who would win? Ricky. Who would win? Hey, what What are we talking about here? We talking- <laughs> <laughs> like if it was who was who would be the better doctor, Doctor Ricky or Doctor Chalmers? Oh, yeah, that's that's a tough one because yeah, I mean, I'm obviously tremendous, but uh, <laughs> Chalmers is modest he's, too. He's pretty okay himself. He's pretty okay himself. Um, <laughs> but I think I think I'd probably just edge him. Yeah. <laughs> All right, uh, Paul, um, you got to, uh, Paul, you got to play Time Lord as well in series two, right? I very did, briefly, yeah, very yeah. briefly. Jeez, we're getting like small little hints of little what's hints. happening here. We should be writing these down. There are yeah, Time Lords. I just, uh, I, mm-hmm. I'd rather talk about something. I just like to point out at the Toronto Comic Con, I'll be the one at the uh, Dark Journey table dressed as Sailor Moon. <laughs> oh no. And say hello. Oh. Oh. So it How much was nice that we were going to stop up. by, but I suddenly have an urge not to. He, he has oh, this please. thing for oh, people please. dressed as Sailor Moon. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be fresh out of the shower. Uh. <laughs> wow. You've got two weeks. You got Yeah, there you go. Two weeks. That's two weeks, yeah. Get a yeah. Little... Wow. No, not even wow. tomorrow. Wow. Delightful internet. You've got like three fetishes at once there. No pants, Sailor Moon, and fresh out of the shower. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> This tells the beginning of a really bad porno, and that's why I'm going to leave it at that. <laughs> um, all right. Well, I want to thank you guys for coming on the show today. It's nice to get some hints, some subtle hints as well. Some subtle hints. Some subtle hints. Now, I, now I'm going to have to like have AJ re-record everything quickly. Figure. What you mean? Do you mean this podcast? No, AJ, no. can you do all the voices? 
could try. Mm, I could try. It's not gonna work. I'm, my like English accent's pretty weak. Oh. You, I, I wouldn't, wouldn't be able, be able to. to uh, I, I couldn't pull Ricky off. No. No. Let's hope not. But I we'll, see what, we'll see what happens at Comic Con, right? <laughs> see what happens at Comic Con. I feel like there's going to be some incriminating photos at there, Comic Con. Maybe, like, maybe we can get some acting lessons or something. While it's we're funny there. because I was just talking to you today about you being the photographer. Yeah. So I'm going to be a photographer now. Maybe. Because uh, if, if someone's going to be the victim of the Sailor Moon costume, it's going to be you. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> All I'm right. I'm fed to the wolves. That's okay. That's that's the point of being on the bottom of the food chain. So. I want to thank you guys for coming on the show and doing a quick promotion. Um, look forward to hopefully meeting majority of you anyways at Toronto Comic Con. Hopefully to meet all of you at one point. Thank uh, you. Definitely mm-hmm. wanna we want to come up and see you guys for our episode 200. It's going to be a huge podcast. We're looking forward to it, yeah. Definitely. Thank you for inviting us. Uh, no, Well, it's kind of the other way around, but I want to make sure that 200 is kind of like a huge... Uh, milestone? Milestone. Mm-hmm. It is a huge milestone. Mm-hmm. I won't lie to you. I thought... Oh, it's massive in podcasting. It is, yeah. No, you guys are, yeah, it's excellent. You guys are doing great. And we can see, too, that, like, uh, you know, your viewership is going up and up and up. And it's it's great to see that you guys are, you know, traveling that wave of success. That's great. So, definitely, like I said, definitely want to thank you guys for taking your time. Uh, and we hope, what? especially late, Sunday especially night. late Sunday yeah. night, mm-hmm. out of the blue. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, we look forward to seeing you guys, and uh, you know all the Comic Con fans. And Comic Con is uh, March twentieth, twenty first, and twenty second, and we will be there along with the droids. So, Definitely. looking forward to it. Definitely want to thank this podcast. His exterminate. No. <laughs> uh oh. I was gonna thank you for being on the show. Now we just broke the podcast. <laughs> We're dead. Experiment. You're all dead. You're all dead. And I and I hope Paul gets out of the shower soon. He's been in there for 34 minutes. So. I'm staying in for the rest of the night. Oh, he's just gonna fall asleep. He's good. Yeah. Yeah. All right, guys. Thank you for being on the podcast. And thank you, guys. Enjoy the rest of your night. It was definitely thank a pleasure. Thank you. Cheers. Yep, yeah. Take care, guys. Enjoy your chibi Have a good one. Okay.